As we navigate the 21st century, the urgency to address climate change and sustainability challenges has never been more pronounced. Amidst this backdrop, a transformative concept in architecture has emerged, living buildings. These structures are not merely sustainable, but are designed to interact symbiotically with their environment, mirroring the processes of living organisms. In this episode, we delve into the principles, technologies, historical context, economic considerations, and implications of living building design, offering a glimpse into the future of architecture. Living buildings represent a paradigm shift in architectural design, aiming to create structures that generate more resources than they consume, treat their waste, and operate in harmony with the natural ecosystem. The concept transcends traditional green building practices by incorporating principles of biomimicry, regenerative design, and closed loop systems. Net positive resource generation. Living buildings produce more energy and water than they use. This is achieved through renewable energy systems, rainwater harvesting, and wastewater treatment technologies that exceed the building's consumption needs. Regenerative design. Unlike sustainable designs that aim to do no harm, regenerative design seeks to improve the surrounding environment. This involves restoring natural habitats, enhancing biodiversity, and increasing soil health through the building's presence. Closed loop systems. Inspired by natural ecosystems, living buildings operate on closed loop systems where waste is treated as a resource. For instance, organic waste can be composted on site to enrich the soil, while gray water can be treated and reused for irrigation. Biophilic integration. Living buildings incorporate natural elements and processes to enhance the well-being of occupants. This includes ample natural light, green walls, indoor plants, and spaces designed to connect occupants with nature. The concept of living buildings has evolved significantly over time. Early green building practices focused primarily on energy efficiency and reducing environmental impact. The movement gained momentum in the 1970s with the oil crisis, prompting architects to explore alternative energy sources and sustainable materials. The introduction of the LEED certification in the 1990s marked a significant milestone, setting standards for green building practices. In recent years, the Living Building Challenge, launched by the International Living Future Institute, has pushed the boundaries further by establishing rigorous criteria for buildings to be classified as living. These criteria include net positive energy, water, and waste, among other stringent requirements. Biophilic design is a crucial component of living buildings, focusing on the inherent human connection to nature. This design philosophy integrates natural elements into the built environment, aiming to improve the psychological and physiological well-being of occupants. Key elements of biophilic design include natural light, Maximizing natural light through large windows, skylights, and open spaces reduces the need for artificial lighting and enhances mood and productivity. Indoor greenery. Incorporating plants, green walls, and indoor gardens improves air quality and creates a calming atmosphere. Natural materials. Using materials such as wood, stone, and bamboo that evoke a sense of nature and reduce the environmental footprint. Studies have shown that biophilic design can lead to reduced stress, improved cognitive function, and overall better health outcomes for building occupants. The realization of living buildings hinges on advanced technologies that integrate seamlessly into the architectural fabric. Some of the key technologies include renewable energy systems, water management systems, and building materials and construction techniques solar panels and photovoltaic glazing. These technologies convert sunlight into electricity. Innovations in photovoltaic glazing allow windows and building facades to generate power without compromising aesthetics. Wind turbines. Small-scale wind turbines can be integrated into building designs to harness wind energy, especially in regions with favorable wind conditions. Geothermal systems. By tapping into the stable temperatures underground, 
Geothermal systems provide efficient heating and cooling solutions, reducing the reliance on conventional HVAC systems. Rainwater harvesting. Roof designs that channel rainwater into storage tanks for filtration and use in non-potable applications, such as irrigation and toilet flushing. Gray water recycling. Systems that treat water from sinks, showers, and laundry for reuse, reducing the demand for fresh water. Living machines. These are engineered ecosystems that treat wastewater biologically through a series of tanks containing plants, bacteria, and other organisms, mimicking natural wetlands. Sustainable materials. The use of materials with low environmental impact, such as recycled steel, reclaimed wood, and low carbon concrete. Additionally, materials like mycelium, fungal root structures, and hempcrete are gaining traction for their renewability and insulation properties. Prefabrication and modular construction. These methods minimize waste and construction time, enhancing efficiency and reducing the environmental footprint of building projects. 3. D-Printing This technology allows for precise construction with minimal waste, and it enables the use of innovative materials and complex designs that traditional construction methods cannot achieve. While the initial costs of implementing advanced technologies and sustainable materials in living buildings can be higher than traditional construction, the long-term savings and benefits often outweigh these costs. Key economic considerations include Initial investment versus long-term savings The upfront investment in renewable energy systems, water management technologies, and sustainable materials can lead to significant long-term savings in utility bills, maintenance, and operational costs. Return on investment Living buildings can offer a high return on investment through energy savings, increased property value, and reduced healthcare costs due to improved indoor air quality and occupant well-being. Financial incentives. Government incentives, grants, and subsidies for renewable energy installations, water conservation technologies, and sustainable building materials can offset initial costs and make living buildings more financially viable. To understand the practical application of these principles and technologies, Let's explore some pioneering examples of living buildings. Touted as the greenest commercial building in the world, the Bullet Center in Seattle embodies the living building ethos. It features a rooftop solar array that generates more electricity than the building uses, a rainwater to potable water system, and composting toilets. The building's materials were meticulously selected to avoid harmful chemicals promoting a healthier indoor environment. Quantitative data shows that the Bullet Center generates 60% more energy than it consumes annually. The Edge, an office building in Amsterdam, is renowned for its intelligent design and sustainability features. It utilizes a sophisticated array of solar panels, a rainwater harvesting system, and advanced building management systems that optimize energy use. The building also incorporates extensive green spaces, promoting biophilic design and employee well-being. The Edge has achieved an energy efficiency rating of 102%, meaning it produces more energy than it consumes. Bosco Verticale, or Vertical Forest, consists of two residential towers covered in trees and shrubs. This living facade not only provides aesthetic value, but also improves air quality, reduces noise pollution, and creates a microhabitat for urban wildlife. The vegetation helps regulate temperatures within the building, reducing the need for artificial heating and cooling. The project has been shown to absorb 30 tons of CO2 annually and produce approximately 19 tons of oxygen. One Central Park in Sydney is a striking example of living building design. The mixed-use development features a vertical garden that covers much of its facade. Designed by botanist Patrick Blanc, the building integrates solar panels and a heliostat system to direct sunlight into shaded areas. Rainwater harvesting and gray water recycling systems reduce water consumption, and its green walls help regulate the internal temperature, reducing the need for air conditioning. 
One Central Park has won multiple awards for its innovative approach to sustainable urban living. Park Royal on Pickering in Singapore is a hotel that seamlessly blends luxury with sustainability. Its design includes extensive greenery, with over 15,000 square meters of lush gardens, waterfalls, and planter terraces. The building's green features provide natural cooling and air purification. It uses a rainwater harvesting system to irrigate the gardens, reducing water use. The integration of nature within its urban context enhances the well-being of guests and contributes to the biodiversity of the area. The building has been awarded the BCA Greenmark Platinum, Singapore's highest green building rating. Number one silo in Cape Town, South Africa, is part of the V&A Waterfront's redevelopment and exemplifies sustainable design in a mixed-use development. The building utilizes seawater from the harbor for cooling, reducing the need for conventional air conditioning. Solar panels on the roof generate electricity, and a sophisticated building management system optimizes energy use. The design also includes green roofs and terraces that provide insulation and support local biodiversity. Number One Silo has received a six-star Green Star rating from the Green Building Council of South Africa, reflecting its commitment to sustainability. Despite their promise, living buildings face several challenges. The initial costs of implementing advanced technologies and sustainable materials can be prohibitive. Additionally, integrating these systems requires specialized knowledge and skills, which are not yet widespread in the construction industry. Regulatory hurdles and the need for new standards and certifications also pose significant barriers. Cost reduction. Advancements in technology and increased demand for sustainable building materials are driving down costs. Government incentives and subsidies can also make these projects more affordable. Education and training. Developing comprehensive education and training programs for architects, engineers, and builders can equip the industry with the necessary skills to design and construct living buildings. Policy support. Advocating for supportive policies and regulatory frameworks can help streamline the adoption of living building principles. This includes updating building codes and standards to accommodate new technologies and sustainable practices. Living buildings offer significant social benefits by creating healthier indoor environments that enhance the well-being and productivity of occupants. Features like improved air quality, natural lighting, and biophilic design elements contribute to physical and mental health. Studies have shown that living building occupants experience lower stress levels, higher satisfaction, and increased productivity. To support the growth of living buildings, policy frameworks should include tax breaks for investments in renewable energy, water conservation technologies, and sustainable building materials are provided. Offering financial support for the development and construction of living buildings. Revising building codes to incorporate sustainable practices and new technologies. Living buildings can significantly impact community lifestyles and urban development by promoting sustainability and fostering a sense of ownership and responsibility towards the environment. Community involvement in the design and maintenance of these buildings enhances social cohesion and awareness of sustainable practices. Living buildings are more than just a trend in architecture. They represent a fundamental shift towards a more sustainable and regenerative approach to the built environment. By understanding and implementing the principles and technologies behind living buildings, we can create structures that not only coexist with nature, but also contribute positively to the health of our planet and its inhabitants. There you have it. Let us know your thoughts on this episode in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this one. Thanks for watching.